Today I want to look at taking cuttings, so artificially reproducing plants asexually. First of all, I'm going to try a shrubbery bush such as Busy Lizzie or equivalent. I'm going to choose this nice variegated shrub here as it is one of my favourites in my garden. Basically you need to find a bush that has many branches. You need to find a branch with a number of leaves to be used as cuttings and these cuttings can develop successfully in water so it can be done without soil and are the quickest and easiest to do. First of all, let's choose a suitable branch. We need to take a branch which has enough leaves on so we can leave a few at the top for photosynthesis and still be able to strip some of the leaves from the bottom because where the leaves are stripped from is where the roots are going to grow. Where the leaves grow from are called nodes and this is where we have a high concentration of undifferentiated cells and these can then develop into roots. If you can remember back to the beginning of the course when we talked about stem cells and differentiated cells, differentiated cells are specialised cells. The stem cells have not yet differentiated so they can develop into different types of cells. When you strip off the leaves you will be leaving these undifferentiated cells exposed and when they develop in the water they can become roots. So let's look for a good branch. So this looks like a good branch. I'll take it off here. Now we need to find a suitable container to grow them in. At school we could use a boiling tube to put them in but anything that is suitable at home from an old glass to a small plastic container. I'm going to use this jam jar. So we're going to need to strip off these bottom leaves and then I am going to place them into this jam jar to make sure the nodes are submerged in the water so that the roots can grow. So very carefully because it's quite prickly. I need to remove these. It is still one of my favourite plants so. I think that will just about do. Now what you can see is um, to so that they actually just sort of sit and don't just touch the bottom. I mean it's fine if they touch the bottom but one way of doing it is that you can actually put a piece of card over the top. Especially this is particularly useful if you have a small cutting. So if you were going to put something in like this, which we could do actually, what we'd do is we've stripped the leaves off, cut it just underneath the node. And what we would do is you put like a little cross in there. And what that does is it supports it so it just sits like that. Right, so we'll try doing a big one as well. Not that this one really needs support because it's so large. But there we go, we've got a large one and a small one and we will see what will happen. The second way I'm going to use it is just to simply planting my cutting into soil. I'm actually going to use some rooting hormone for this so I need to find a plant that I want to clone and I'll take a small length of a stem. We could just use a leaf if we wanted to from the main plant and then I'm going to cut the base off this cutting and I'm going to dip it into rooting powder to induce a plant, the plant cells to divide and grow. And then I'm going to partly bury it in some soil. So here we go, here's the cutting. And then here's my rooting powder. So very easy to get hold of. I get mine from Amazon, other places are available. And there we go. I've dipped it into my rooting powder and then I just place it into my soil and we'll see what happens. Next I'm going to try to save this poor rose. Roses are a little bit trickier. I need to find the new growth like here on the rose bush and go down until it becomes woody so it's much stronger. Now this doesn't happen until the flower has fully opened and the petals have gone. In fact, this one has lost its flower. 
I'm going to actually grow this in a pot containing fir bark and I'm going to use an old drinks bottle as a propagator. So first of all, I'm going to try and find the correct place to cut it. So where I'm going to cut it is I'm going to cut it here. So like I said, I'm going to grow my uh, rose cutting in this pot or containing fir bark and I've really soaked it with water because that's really important to have plenty of water in that bark and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to carefully strip the leaves now I am going to be cutting it I'm going to be putting it under a pot bottle so it does actually have to fit underneath that so we don't need all the leaves for photosynthesis we just need to save them. I'll take that one off as well. And I will cut it just under the node there. Whoop. And then I'm going to take off, to try to snap off, each of these thorns. And what they do is they leave little openings. And hopefully the rooting powder will take to those. So here's my rooting powder and I will dip my rose into the rooting powder and as you can see it's covered that area of the rooting powder and I'm just going to slip it directly into my bark. So I'm going to use this old drinks bottle as a propagator or like a mini greenhouse really. So I've cut the bottom off the plastic bottle so it will fit over my cutting. And then you can either have the cap on and then slowly release it over the next few days, or you can leave it off because that vents the heat out. It depends on how warm the environment is at the moment. And then it will still allow moisture to build up um, um, inside the bottle. And so it will help keep the moisture in on the plant and that helps it to develop and grow. So I'm going to put the dome over my plant. I'm going to leave the vent on to start off with. I'm going to take it out of the water now and leave it on the tray and then I'll see what happens. So now you can see I've got my three different types of cuttings. I've got the one, the most simple one, which I've done in the water, which is this one here. Then I've done the one which I dipped in rooting hormone and then put into the soil here. And then I've gone for the slightly more complicated one with the propagator over the top for the rose here, which is put into bark chippings. Let's see what happens.